What is up my friends, your weekend has officially started, it is the Anfield Agenda Friday evening news roundup. Today I'm going to be giving you the result of our behind closed doors fixture against Preston, we're going to be speaking about a couple of uninspiring links to join Liverpool and of course we're going to be revisiting the latest with the Trent Alexander-Arnold to Real Madrid rumours, we're going to be asking how realistic is it that we lose Trent and what can we do to stop it. That and lots more over the next few minutes, but as always, we want to know your thoughts, so let us know in the comment section. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it, and of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you all immensely as well for your support of the first Anfield Agenda week of podcasts. We have now broken into the top 150 in the UK podcast charts. Absolutely delighted with your support. Thank you so much. If you haven't already given it a listen, just search Anfield Agenda, whatever your favourite podcast platform is, and we should show up on there for you. Give us a listen, let us know your thoughts, and again, thank you for your continued support. We are just two weeks away as well from our shows in Cardiff and Liverpool, so don't forget you can still get your tickets with the link in the description of this video. Right, first story is one that I wish I could see here and say that I had lots of confidence in, because it would make me very happy. Story is, according to Marca over in Spain, Liverpool are one of the few clubs considering triggering the 49 million euro release clause of Nico Williams athletic Bilbao contract in fact I believe it's 55 million euro excuse me about 49 million pound so let me know your thoughts on that I have to say honestly I'd love to sit here and tell you it's real I'd love to sit here and be excited about it but I am dubious on this one as much as I want it to be true anything that comes from market I usually have doubts about because they like to big up Spanish publications in particular Marca like to do Real Madrid's bidding, so maybe they're just trying to ensure that Barcelona don't get the player. Now, I want to talk for a second about money spent. Now, money spent isn't the be-all and end-all in the transfer window, but it gives us an indication. So Sky put up something last night, a graphic that kind of made me sit up. It was about the money being spent since Eric Ten Hag has come in as Manchester United manager. Since then, Chelsea have spent... £1.1 billion sterling. Manchester United come in on second on the list with just over half a billion, £506 million. Spurs next up with £454 million spent. Arsenal, £415 million spent. Manchester City, just under £400 million spent. And Liverpool, £300 million. A full £205 million behind our arch rivals, Manchester United. And £700, almost £800 million behind Todd Bowley's Chelsea. And we're supposed to be able to go and compete. Make those numbers add up, please, my friends, because it certainly paints a picture. Next up, Liverpool apparently are being linked to Adrian Rabio again in many sections of the media. I would be really, really, really concerned if there's any truth to this. We've turned down the opportunity to sign Adrian Rabio on multiple occasions on free contracts. There's no reason why now, all of a sudden, we'd be looking to bring a 29-year-old in unless it's the cheap option. So I'm hoping, more than anything else, that there's nothing to these Adrian Rabio links because, well, they're very worrying. Next up, the Daily Express has said, Trent Alexander-Arnold has laid down the gauntlet to Liverpool and is increasingly likely to give Arne Slot a year to convince him to stay at Anfield or he will link up with his teammate at England international duty, Jude Bellingham at Real Madrid. Another piece from Team Talk goes on to say, a new report states it would take a ridiculous fee for Liverpool to even consider a sale, and they're talking about a number at £67 million. But here's the kicker, my friends. Real Madrid's plan has started to become clear today because they've already briefed and let it be known in the media that they don't want to pay any money for Trent. They want to sign him on a free next year, and that is their plan. So I will say to you yet again, we cannot allow Trent to go into this season to kick a football in the Premier League without a new deal being signed because one thing that strikes me here, and this hasn't come directly from Trent, and we always have to take that into consideration, but if someone's saying you've got one year to prove yourself, they're clearly one foot out the door already. If they've any doubts about Liverpool being their club or Arne Slot being the right guy, it's time to cash in. And I don't want to lose Trent. 
I want Liverpool to keep Trent. But what I can't have happen, and what you can't have happen, is Trent Alexander-Arnold, in his prime, in one year's time, at 26, walking out the door to join Real Madrid on a free. It is quite simply unacceptable, and we need to get our finger out. There's lots of reports as well, as, as Liverpool look to backtrack now and dampen out the fires that are building all around them. It looks as though Liverpool are suddenly saying now they want to start negotiating with Virgil Trent and with Mohamed Salah. It's a little bit late, don't we think? These things should have been done quite a while ago, especially Trent Alexander-Arnold. So, let's see how it pans out. But as I've said, in the very best case scenario now, if Liverpool do convince Trent to stay, we are going to have to overpay him by a considerable amount just to keep him at the club. Something that could have been avoided six months ago if we had have moved quicker. Reese Williams, another player who was once touted as a real talent by Jurgen Klopp. He has now been, well, he's been sidelined and asked to train away from the first team with uh, other players who just don't have a future at the football club. So that picture there has become a little bit clearer as well. I want to talk to you for a moment about Yilmaz, the player from Galatasaray that no doubt you've seen lots of links today to say Liverpool are considering a €30 million Euro bid to sign him. The problem with that is that the Galatasaray president, Galatasaray, excuse me, their president has come out just a few days ago as reported here on the channel in an interview with CNN Turkey to say the player isn't for sale. They've had interest in him and in some other players and Yilmaz, of all of them, just is not for sale. And apart from everything else, let's be honest, it will be a very, very underwhelming signing. He's a right-footed winger who plays on the right wing. That's kind of not really how we line up, albeit I have said on many occasions that we don't necessarily have to have inverted wingers. And I've been champion Nico Williams to be the Salah replacement longer term. But that is where we were at with that one. So Yilmaz apparently isn't for sale, even though today we're being linked everywhere yet again. Now, one thing that I do want to say, and a couple of bits of good news is, happy Alison Becker Day. It was on this day in 2018 that our beautiful big Brazilian Adonis came to Liverpool and started an era of success. Can't believe that six years have gone by so quickly. We are truly blessed to have him at the football club and hopefully we have him for three or four more years to come as well. Also, there's been some pictures doing the rounds of former Liverpool player Alan Hansen out on the golf course, which is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant to see. Great to see him getting back to full health. Delighted to see those pictures doing the rounds as well. And it is brilliant news that he is at home with his family, safe, well and healthy. And thank you to those for sharing those photos. Now, one last thing before we finish up. New Liverpool goalkeeping coach Fabian Otte has introduced goggles for keepers which limit their peripheral vision in sessions. These goggles are designed to enhance the player's reactions, hand-eye coordination and technical skills by limiting the sensory input and output that they receive. So again, anything that gives us that little edge, I'm all for. But if you can take one thing away from this video today, my friends, it is that we should be concerned, very concerned, with the Trent Alexander-Arnold situation. Now, people are saying to me, Craig, this isn't Trent, or his brother, who I believe is his agent, coming out and saying any of this. But they also haven't rubbished it. You haven't seen one post on social media from Trent to say, I'm happy where I am, or I love the club, or anything like that. So those who don't believe that Trent may at least consider walking away. What's the response to why he hasn't posted anything in support of the position at the club? It is because, most likely, he has had his head turned, and at the very least, he's weighing up his options. But what we cannot do, and cannot allow to happen, is for him to join Real Madrid for free in a year's time. It would be one of the most embarrassing episodes at the football club in my time supporting them. And I mean that sincerely. You cannot allow a local boy, a vice-captain, in the prime of his career, to depart the football club for nothing. Now to finish up, I did say that I was going to give you the result of Liverpool's behind closed doors friendly against Preston today. And whilst I don't believe in pre-season friendlies giving us an indication of anything, they are uh, important, I guess, to build up minutes and nothing else. But we did lose the game by a goal to nil. I wouldn't start panicking about it. Liverpool's first half team was Yaros, Bradley, Vandenberg, Kwanzaa, Costas Chimikas, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, Dominic Sobosloy, Wittoro Endo, Doak Salah and Carvalho. They all played some part in the first half. Second half team, Davies, Stevenson, Nalo, Phillips, Chambers, Ombek came on, Endo, Neoni came on by Chechich, Morton, McConnell and Kumas. 
So there we are, my friends. Liverpool lost that one by a goal to nil, but it is minutes in the legs, and that's what pre-season is all about. So I will be back tonight at 8.45 for our last live show till Sunday, because Saturday is my day off, and we will be going through all of these stories in far more detail, of course asking you for your thoughts as well. Don't forget to drop a like on this video, hit the subscribe button, and most importantly, do check out the links to our shows. Two weeks to go. Two weeks today will be in Cardiff, and then on Sunday in two weeks we will be in Liverpool. Tickets are priced at just £15, and you can get up with the link in the description. I'll see you later on this evening. If not, enjoy your weekend, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.